Hey everyone, my name is GamerCory and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Now in today's video, I do want to go over a super smelter design that will be compatible with 1.16 just in case you guys are using any of the zero tick super smelters that are currently working in 1.15.2 and even some of the previous snapshots. Now I have tested this in the latest snapshot and it has been working just fine. And I really can't wait to see what it will fully work and how it will be used in 1.16. So I'm super excited for that. However, this is the super smelter design. I have it all just kind of sitting right here, ready to go. And basically there's a lot of functions on this thing and I'm honestly very proud of it that a lot of people might not necessarily need. Number one is it has auto detect for smelting. As you can see, the lights are on. So that's detecting that this furnace is basically lit in being used. It has an auto refueling system and it is using dried kelp blocks as the source. And it actually has a locking mechanism just in case there's not enough um, dried kelp blocks in the system it will turn this light on and it will lock our input chest. We also have buttons to auto refuel or manual refuel and manual disperse whatever cart is sitting at and underneath our input. We have um, a basically minecart hopper line that will be sent into a holding cell and then sent back up to ready to be smelting. We have a controlling system that will determine how many items are in this hopper minecart by this hopper here. We also have the smelting line, which should be going off, I would think, any moment. It's an auto refueling protection line. So if you guys do a huge smelting job, this will actually hold this sticky piston in place so that it can actually refuel that hopper minecart completely. And then it will send back down the, the, the tracks again. So you guys can continue to smelt this as long as these lights are on because that means each of those furnaces are burning hot, which is pretty amazing. And the only time that you won't be able to access this chest, if not enough fuel in the system, which would be basically, it would be five dried kelp stacks in the mine, the hopper minecart, and then we would have at least four here. So basically if we take out two, this will turn on and it will lock this chest, which is pretty amazing. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys exactly how to build this so that if you guys want to have a compatible 1.16 super smelter in your world, then you guys will be all set because this does work in 1.15.2 and previous versions as of right now. So let's go ahead and get started with this build. Now there was a couple things that I did forget to put inside that chest that I did realize. Number one, you will need two fences. And the other thing that you guys will need is 10 sticky pistons. So that is a couple things that I did forget to put inside of that chest. But let's go ahead and get started with this build right now. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go up by seven. So three, four, five, six, and seven. This is basically your standing platform. Now, your chest would technically go here and here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of build out this area because this is where the other chest is actually going to go. Um, and then we would put an ender chest here in the center. Let's actually just go ahead and do that real quickly. We got it. Um, and then we'd have another one there. Perfect. And then we would actually have this as our standing platform. We need, actually need to get rid of that one for the time being. You need to come down below and you need to put in a... Um, Basically, we need to go like this and that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to replace this block right below it with a redstone um, block. You can use a lever if you want. It's completely up to you. But we're going to grab our powered rails for the time being. And we're basically going to go up and through that one. And then what we need to do is grab our detector rail. And what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to extend that out by one so that there's two right here. And then we're gonna make this a detector rail and going up. And then what we can actually do is we can actually destroy that one and then we can actually put our chest down now. And then that way this one is going up into the system and then this one is doing the same thing there. But you wanna make sure that you put this other powered rail here just so that it can actually stay at that nice slant. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side but you only need this top section. So what you would do is you would come down like this and you would do power or uh, the rails like that and then put a power rail here destroy that one. And then well, you can actually just go ahead and put a 
chest there and a chest there. And that one is that all completed. Now at this point, you're going to want to extend out by one block here with another powered rail. And then you're going to want to grab your obby blocks that you were using earlier or that you had in the chest earlier. And you're going to surround that block with obby. Now at this point, what we're going to want to do is grab a hopper, place a hopper here, put a block there and there. And you're going to want to grab a couple comparators now. We're going to go a comparator here and a comparator facing out of this hopper. And then you're going to want to put a 128 items inside of this furnace. Now, if you guys are only making it 64, you'd only put 64 um, blocks in here. This is going to control whatever you want to come out of your input chest. Completely up to you. Now, at the back side of this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and grab another redstone block, put it right there, and that will be that powered rail, and that will power all those powered rails as well. Now at this point, what you want to do is put a temporary block on top of that hopper and then put one off to the side like that. And you're going to be grabbing your sticky pistons. Let's go ahead and grab those. Um, we can put this in just in our chest for the net time being. We're going to put one facing down like that. And you're going to want to face one facing in towards that chest there. You want to grab that, those fences that we actually just got done grabbing and put one there. And then you're going to do another sticky piston here and a fence in front of that. And that's gonna basically hold the mine carts into place for what we want. So that's what those systems are here. And you're gonna to wanna to grab whatever block you want and you're gonna place it down on top of this one right here. Um, this will actually lock that chest, which is exactly what we want. And what we wanna do is put a uh, sticky piston basically right where that one's at. We wanna put one right there which is beautiful. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna use our lights. And this one is actually gonna go kind of off the center there. And then we're also gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna come down one like that. So we'd have kind of a design like this, and we do the same thing on this side. So that's gonna be our lighting source. And then what you can do is if you guys are using sea lanterns or you guys can use stairs for whatever block you want above here, as long as it's transparent or a stair or a half slab would work just fine. And then the rest of this, you can actually go ahead and um, let's grab the right block. And then we can actually fill this in just like this there. And that's kind of where our, what our input would actually kind of look like where we're going to be standing. Beautiful. Now what we need to actually do uh, at this point in time is we need to go another block here and then we're gonna go up a block and we're gonna grab our repeaters, no tick delay, put it right there. And then we're gonna grab one of our redstone torches and place it right here. And then you're gonna wanna take this one and go up or out one and then up one. And then you're gonna wanna put redstone dust on the top of those blocks right there. Then at this point, this is where you can actually go ahead and put yourself a button on this side because this will actually control this system. And this is going to control if you want to um, do a manual mine cart. You can see that that redstone torch is firing. And then we're actually going to do the one to do the, another button on this side. Now on this side, it's going to be it's slightly different. What you're going to want to do is actually come up a block like this. And you're going to want to put a comparator facing outside of this chest because we want to read the chest not the mine cart. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up a block like that. And then we're going to grab our other two pieces of obby and one's going to go here. And then one's going to go up at a diagonal right there. So it's actually going to be right behind the button and then right below the button, because this is where we actually need to put our other slime blocks. We're going to put two on that side, four on this side. So you'd actually have uh, one, two, three, and four. And then what we need to do is put a sticky piston facing down right there. Get rid of those blocks now. And then what you need to do is grab your redstone um, block and place it on the bottom right here. And then on the one that you faced the sticky piston facing down right here, you're going to go down two and then a redstone block just like that. All right. So now we need to grab a piece of redstone dust here and a piece of redstone dust here. So this one will actually fire that sticky piston. So this is going to be 
the manual for the fuel and manual for the input or whatever you're trying to super smelt. Now at this point, what we need to do is extend our block. So we're gonna actually come down off like this and we're gonna put one like this, one like that. And then we're gonna kind of staircase up just like that. And then you're gonna fill just these three pieces in with redstone and that's gonna fire that because we want that to be locked and down at all times where this one is not going to be. So let's go ahead and start our next phase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab whatever block we're using and we're gonna come down one like this off of this block here, this redstone block. We're gonna have a sticky piston facing this way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this by putting um, a redstone dust there, but we do need to put a, ourselves a fence gate on. And then when we power this, we're going to go ahead and it's going to get extended. And then at the other side of this, we want to put in another, basically a block so that it creates this nice little fence, actual gate, basically. And we want that to basically hold whatever hopper mine carts are going to be coming through there. At this point, you want to extend this one by two and then by two here. And then you're going to want to put two repeaters on this right here. We've got two with full delay and then fill this in with redstone dust and then we're going to go up a block and then we're going to come to just like that and we're actually going to grab a redstone uh torch we're going to need that now we're going to put one there and what we're going to do is we're going to put a um block or a piston on the top of that one with redstone dust on the top of that and then what you want to do is you want to put a block on the top of that one uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come down by two and we need to put a block here. So what we need to do is we actually need to get our powered rails to go through this block just like this. Let's go here and here. And then we're going to want to put, um, I like to actually make this block a redstone block, but that's just me. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And then what you're going to want to do is put whatever block you want here. So you can grab your powered rails like that and then delete that one. Just make sure that you don't actually delete this block here. Otherwise you will destroy that slant. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run it down into this gate here. So we're actually going to run it down um, and into the floor basically like that. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up with a couple more. And then what we basically need to do is connect this. So we're going to come down one more block here. And then we're going to wrap it around and connect it up with that just like this. Perfect. Now you want a power rail here, power rail here, here. Um, you could actually probably just get away with a regular rail right there and rail, regular rail. And then that way it's all connected up and around. That's kind of the weird little contraption that we actually got going on. So if we actually put a upper minecart here into the system, it's going to lock right there. But as soon as we push the button that we have here, it's going to send it into place, which is exactly what we want to have happen. Now what we need to do is basically go out, uh, you know, so many blocks so that we can actually start our system. Um, if you don't want it so compact, like the, the way that we're going to have it, um, the minimum you need to actually go from here is 15. So you need one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now this would actually be the start of our, our hoppers. So we'd actually put our furnaces right here. So we're going to actually going to go ahead and put a ton of furnaces in, uh, let's go ahead and grab them. And I'm going to basically have them facing out. And the reason that we're actually putting this block here is because we're actually going to be putting our hoppers on the top of them and on, we're actually going to be putting them on in, in the front of them too. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side, but with a gap in between with a hopper on the top and a hopper facing into the front of it, just like that. And that's going to be basically our, um, super smelter so what we need to do now is go down 64 on each side so that we have 128 furnaces and then we're going to put our hoppers on the top and on the sides all the way down so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now
So I've placed down all of the furnaces and the hoppers so you guys can go ahead and see them here. Now we actually have to have the dispensing units for these. So what we're going to be doing is counting eight and every eight. Now you don't have to do this every eight. You can do this every 16 or 30, 32, 24. It really kind of depends on how many you want to do this with. But I like to do every eight. Um, if you want to make it cheaper for you guys, um, the less you do, that means the less of the resources you're going to be using. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put one there and obviously there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There and there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to do this all the way down the line. Now, at this point in time, we want to connect the hoppers facing into that hopper that we face it down. So we want to go back basically underneath all the furnaces and we're going to do that all the way down the line on all of these. So let's go ahead and finish that right now. Now that we've actually completed that, we need to grab our droppers that we're gonna be using and 16 of our 18 droppers are gonna be used on just this. So you need to come right below and then basically just face it downward just like that. The other thing that you could do is you can face it inward if you really want to so that shooting into just one stream. Um, it's completely up to you guys what you guys would like to do. Um, so we could actually do that too. So if you want to do that, you just face it in like this. That way you're using less packed ice. So we can actually go ahead and do that all the way down the line. So now what we've done, we've placed all of our hoppers down. So what we need to do here is grab whatever building block that we were using. So let's just go ahead and grab that. And then you're going to want to place one on each side of the droppers that we just got done placing in. So we can actually just go down the line just like this up. Oh, make sure that we're not destroying our hoppers though. Put one there. And then we can actually just do this all the way down the line. And then what we're going to do at the same time is we're going to basically be building our clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out just like that. And you're going to go on one on each side and then out to basically two like this and then destroy the middle block. So you have kind of a three by three pattern on this and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of our comparators we're going to grab our repeaters and our dust so it's going to be basically a comparator here and then it's going to be a repeater here and then whatever side the block is on you're going to want to go ahead and put a repeater there and then fill in the rest with dust except for not this top block here and then you're going to do that all the way down on both sides. Now that we have the dropping mechanisms all into place, what we can actually either do now is put down our packed ice, which what we're going to do, since we're not facing it down, we are going to come down to this location here and we're going to run a line of packed ice basically all the way down the center of this entire farm. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I did place the entire uh, packed ice path already. And then the other thing that I did put in place in is the two stacks of glass to make sure that nothing falls out. We will be putting another one actually on the hoppers right here, just in case it spits out and tries to get stuck up in top because it can get stuck on top of these blocks. So if we put like a glass block here, that would prevent that. But we're going to do that a little bit later after we put in the water stream. So we'll do that in just a little bit. So now what we actually need to do is run our powered rails, which we have them in our inventory right here, basically across all of these hoppers. And this one we're going to extend by um, one. So we're going to put a block here, here, and here. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're gonna actually going to extend this one basically by two. So it kind of has that weird kind of a little wrap around here. So we're going to have one there and then we're going to actually going to do a little bit right there and then we're going to start doing more there and then we need to grab our regular rails and then put those on the corners so that we can tie it in now you can do one of two things you can either put a redstone block here in order to power those and then the same thing basically um right here or actually on this one you probably don't even need to put in the um, regular or powered rails there. All right, so what we're gonna do now after we got done putting all of our powered rails in, we're gonna wanna make sure that we power these. So the first thing is, what I like to do is just right above these, every other one, I like to actually put a redstone block on the bottom one and it'll actually power both the upper and the bottom 
rails all the way down for us, which is pretty amazing. And you can see actually right there is going to need one as well, but it's not gonna light up for us. So we can either replace that with a regular rail, which that's probably what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And we'll do the same thing on this side right there. Let's go ahead and grab our redstone blocks again, and then do the exact same thing and mirror it on the other side. So that will power all the same amount of powered rails. Perfect. Now what we need to do here is extend this out by three. So we got one, two, and three. And then we're gonna extend this one out by one, just like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna go up one. On the top of this one right here, we're actually gonna put our third and final uh, detector rail. And then you're gonna have powered rails basically up to that point, just like that. Now on this one, what we need to do is put an observer facing that way. And it's gonna go right into a sticky piston right here. And you can get rid of that block if you want. And then you'd put a redstone block there. And then what we need to do down here is on this furnace, we're gonna be reading two different things. Number one, we're gonna be reading how many blocks are inside of it. So that's gonna be this comparator here. Um, and then the other thing that we're actually gonna be doing is getting a signal when this thing actually is turned on by facing it outside of that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a signal here and then we're basically going to go up. So we got a kind of a weird like system going here. And then that's gonna send it through there and into a redstone dust, which I don't seem to have any more on me. Uh, let's go ahead and do that right here, just like that. So basically what's gonna happen is if this one gets removed, it will trigger that and it'll be the same thing when that fire is smelting, it will send a signal up to here and then it'll eventually send a signal to those two side ones. But that's kind of the start of that system there. And then what we're gonna do here is go up a block like this and we're gonna come out a block. Actually, we're gonna come out two and that's gonna be two redstone dust just like that. And then on the third one, we need to put a repeater. Uh, basically, this will send a long enough signal that once this furnace actually has uh, our 14 kelp blocks, so let's actually go ahead and grab our 14. So we got eight, and then you can see that uh, even if we have a 13 in there, it doesn't quite fire, but as soon as we put our 14th one in there, the repeater triggers, which is exactly what we want to have happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of remove that for the time being. So that's how many blocks we know are in there. And it does include what is being smelted in there. So if this furnace has, say, uh, 10 blocks in it, so we'll just put 10 blocks here, but then we're smelting, we'll just say a whole bunch of blocks here, this will the, pick up that same signal. So let's go ahead and work on the rest of this line here. So we're gonna place another observer on the top of that with a block and a redstone dust. And now what we should be is uh, pretty close to the height of that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up um, and over like this. And this is going to be a redstone line, basically wherever we really want it to be. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put ourselves a, uh, just our sticky piston here. And we'll do it right off of that one right there. And then we're gonna place a redstone block right there as well. And then what you're gonna wanna do is come down one and over, and then basically down across. And then you're gonna wanna connect it into this system like this. Perfect. Actually, we're gonna move that block up because that's where our locking mechanism is actually going to go. And then you would fill in the rest of this with just redstone dust. So what's gonna happen is if we trigger, say, this one, it's gonna push it just once and it actually retracts it really quick. And then it's gonna be the same thing when it's done uh, fueling. So that is our smelting system. All right, so from here, we're gonna work on the uh, fueling system. So we're gonna wanna go out seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And this is where we need to have a 
uh, just a regular rail and we need to make sure that it's turning in the direction that we want it to turn so basically what it's going to do is it's going to come through this area just like that for the refueling and then we're going to basically have it come right back off of this like that so what we need to make sure is this one is facing the direction that we want to so we might as well go ahead and power we'll say this block right here and perfect that's actually working out the way that we want it to so we can actually do the same trick here with a redstone block and then we can actually go down the line here and then actually let's just replace this one with a redstone block and then that should power all of those and then a regular one here and we should only have to get away with uh just one power block here so we can actually replace the center one it really doesn't matter which one you guys do and then we're going to do it that way and like that now we actually have to basically restructure and uh kind of get our our upper mine carts to go over the top of this because it's kind of a weird like snaky snake thing through the whole system so what we're going to do is basically come off of right here and we're going to go up uh, we want to make sure that this one doesn't ever get touched and then what we're gonna we need to do is we need to go up actually two. So from here, we need to be really, really careful. So we can either put a redstone block there or here, but we do need to go over two. So that actually works out just fine, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend it, and then we're gonna want it to basically come back down to that over here as well. Actually, this one needs to go that way first because this is our system and everything's going to be reading from this furnace first so we actually need to bring it over here and drop it down into this system right here and then this one is going to come back and drop into this holding chamber right here so we need to be really careful how we're going to be doing this we need to build up around this block like that we don't have any issues you might have to redesign this just a little bit like if you want this to go kind of at a snake through the system you might have to do that Let's see if we can actually do like that see if that would actually work for us um, i'm actually going to power this rail right here and then we're going to grab some normal rails and kind of go through there there we go perfect and that's the direction that we want it to be going and then we're gonna do the same thing up here and then we're gonna do regular rail regular rail regular rail and then we're gonna do powered rails down here including on top of that one and then we just need to replace one of these with a redstone uh, block or with the lever would work just fine too so that way you guys can actually get that to go back through to that area and we can actually go ahead and uh, get rid of that one put a redstone dust there or redstone block there and then what we're going to do is we're going to do regular rails around there and then we might as well actually just do a powered rail here just to make sure that it has enough power it should to get through all that and then it's going to go right into that holding chamber perfect now what we need to do is this side of the farm should all be or not farm but the this contraption should be all said and done now we actually just need to work on the other side there's a few different things that we need to put in place we need to finish this system here and number one we actually need to power this this piston right here now let's actually go ahead and work on another part of the system here we just have this uh side to finish up so let's go with this one first we're going to put a block here and we're going to extend the redstone dust out by one and we're going to go up a block like that and then we're going to come over a block like here um, so basically on the top of these two blocks that we just got done placing, we're going to place a torch there and also a torch there. A block is going to go on the top of this one, and we're actually going to go ahead and fill this line in just like this. And what we need to do is put our redstone dust on the top of that. And what's going to happen is this is going to power both of those because there's not enough fuel in the system, which is going to lock the system because this isn't detecting that there's any blocks inside of this chest yet. Now, if we actually go ahead and throw um, 
four stacks inside of this chest, which we can actually go ahead and do that now. Then this lamp will actually turn off and this locking mechanism will be pulled back up as well. So that's all done and complete. Now what we need to do here is we actually need to go down like that and we need to put our another redstone torch here that's going to depower this one we actually need to go down oops one more like that and then we're going to go torch and a torch there and then from here we want to go ahead and put a um, couple blocks here so that when this one gets powered it will send a signal to this torch right there which is perfect and then it's going to basically send a signal back up to the top here. Now what we need to do is put a block on the other side of this piston. And then what we're going to do is come down a block. And then just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and place in ourselves a repeater right there. And then redstone, redstone. And that's going to fire and lock that piston into place. So basically what would happen is if we push this button here, it's going to release that by going all the way down. I'm just flicking that and going back up and then this system is separate from this one and then it's going up and controlling the light and also the sticky piston here so that is all set so now the manual release of the fueling system is done so now what we need to do here is put in our other two droppers now this one is going to be a little bit different um, you want to come basically out a couple blocks so what we're going to do is we're going to come out a block here and then you're going to want to go ahead and face a, a hopper facing upwards and then you're going to want a hopper facing um, downwards like that. You can actually get rid of that one and then get rid of this block. And then on this side, what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and put ourselves block here on the back side of that dropper. And we're going to go ahead and put ourselves a comparator right here facing that way. And this one is actually going to go into a block right there. And then what we're going to need to do here is we need to put a repeater. And we need to go ahead and actually we're going to do uh, just a, we can actually just do a sticky piston right here. And then a redstone block at the end. So basically what's going to happen is that even though this system is being triggered off, this system will actually go ahead and be powered by this redstone block. So if we can kind of simulate that, what would happen is we'd have that being pushed into place and being retracted like that. And then what we need to do here is on the other side of this block, we need to put a redstone torch. And then we need to put hoppers facing into each other. So we're just going to put a temporary hopper there and then place the hopper there and then put a hopper facing into that. Now what you want to want to do is put whatever, basically 32 blocks of whatever you want into this hopper. And it's going to be locked by this torch here. And then what we need to do here is come down one and over to put another comparator facing into this one. And then what we're going to do is grab ourselves a uh, two observers and then some redstone dust. And this one we actually need to go ahead and place this way facing into it so I can detect that one. And then I um, observer facing upwards into that one with a piece of redstone dust on the top of that. Now, sometimes people will need, um, in my, that I had built, I didn't need to do this, but sometimes you will have to put a block on the top to send that signal down into this dropper, but you'll just have to test it to see if you need it or not. And then what you need to do is go ahead and um, place a just one piece of whatever item into that bottom dropper. So what's going to happen is when the minecart comes across, it's going to detect it by this observer. It's going to pulse this piston when it detects it. And then when it leaves, it's going to de depower it. It's going to send it into this. This one block is going to be sent into this dropper. It's going to detect it. It's going to power this one, unpower that redstone torch. It's going to basically do a delay. It's going to push this redstone block forward and power it so that that piston stays in place even though there might not be enough fuel in the furnaces hopefully that makes sense now we only have one other system that we actually need to hook up and that is this system right here so we needed to go one more block let's see let's actually move this 
because we actually need it to go a different way because that's going to intermingle with each other there. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to go ahead and put our redstone um, repeater there. And then we're just basically going to step down um, like this. And we're going to go all the way to this location right here. So we can actually go like that. And then we just need to basically do redstone dust all the way down to that point. All right, so when there's enough fuel in the system, it will actually depower this. Actually, we need to do one quick thing here. And we actually need to go and put a block right there. And we're gonna go ahead and put a repeater here and a redstone torch there with a block there. Cause that's letting the system know that there's not enough fuel in that system right now. So we, that's kind of what it looks like. Now, the only thing we have to actually hook up is the, um, the, the blocks here. So we're just gonna kind of weave this into place and we might as well just go to there. And then we use this as a funnel through it, which is pretty amazing that we can actually do that. And then the rest of this will actually all be just glass. And we actually don't need to do double glass all the way down. We can actually just do it to there. And we can actually just do it to there like that. Because the only reason that we need too high is to make sure that the droppers don't push it, you know, on top of each on top of this glass. Like if we were to break this back towards the dropper, then it might actually lose some efficiency not efficiency but we might actually have some loss in the system and then we'll power it around here then what we're going to do is we're going to stand right in the middle of the platform so basically right here is where we want our items to basically come out and you can put it at where basically wherever you guys would like all right now what we need to do is go back and place our water into place on the water streams here Let's go ahead and grab some water buckets. Now, the other thing that you guys will need is either like slabs or stone uh, pressure plates. It's kind of up to you guys what you guys would like to use. Completely up to you. And then we're going to go all the way down to the end of the farm. And place in our first water bucket right here. And then what I'd like to do is to make sure that we're actually two away. So that way, if it accidentally spits out to here, it'll actually land on this water. And then we're gonna do the same thing here and then water. And we're gonna do that all the way down. All right, now that we've actually placed in all of our water streams all the way down, now we can actually put in our um, kelp. So we'll actually go ahead and do that now. Um, let's go ahead and grab some, or you can actually just use your water buckets. It's completely up to you guys what you guys would prefer. So let's just go ahead and jump down here and place in our soul sand. And then we're gonna do Water, 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 water. I get pushed all the way up. And then this is where we're gonna go ahead and put in our trap door. And now it doesn't matter which way you guys put it in because it looks the same with an iron trap door all the way around, which is absolutely fantastic. So you would you actually can just input and stand right here as you collect the items, which is pretty amazing. All right, so now at this point in time, the only thing that we should actually have to do is to start putting in our fuel. So we do need to grab a couple of our hopper mine carts, which uh, doesn't look like I have any more in my inventory. And let's just do that right now. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to load the system uh, by placing some here. And then what we need to do is we need to push it again. And then that will actually load and basically into the system. But we have one at the ready. And then if you want to fill in a couple more here, you could completely up to you. You don't need to have that many. I think you only really need to have five at a time. And then we do need to load one into um, this system. So what we're going to do is we're, for the time being, just going to go ahead and push, push this there so that it, we can actually load our um, upper minecart into, um, into the system. Let's see where we go. And let's go ahead and put that right there. And it's loading everything in. So I'm just actually going to go ahead and fill it all in right there. And then what we can do is we can actually retract that. And that will actually start to fill it up. And then what we need to make sure that we're doing here is making sure that we fill 
this in. Now you guys will go through a lot of fuel the first time that you have to do it because each of your um, hoppers, your, each of your furnaces will need one system or will need 14 dry kelp blocks in there when you first do it. Now it's basically refueling and then this will eventually be pulled back and now it's going to send that back out again. Well, the system just got done fueling and you can actually see that the mine copper mine cart is actually just sitting there and now this has powered and unpowered this redstone torch and unpowered and powered this up here and we're all set to go. Now we should have 14 items inside of each of these um, furnaces, which is amazing. Now we can actually go ahead and give this a test. Now all we have to actually do is go ahead and grab whatever item we want to go ahead and smelt and make sure that this thing is actually going to work. So we're going to do a test of two full um, rows. So that's going to be 18 stacks. Once we actually get to that first one, we're going to see that it's going to go ahead and get sent off. And the other one is already back into place here. Now, as soon as that fills up with the two stacks, it's going to send out. And now we just get this nice little revolving um, like door basically going on. And every time it, it's not quite perfect, it doesn't always take exactly two stacks, which is kind of unfortunate. There's nothing that we can really do about that. But that's why we have the manual line on the other side. And you can see that our items are already starting to flow up. So I'm going to actually get rid of my inventory. And when this is all done, we should actually make sure that we get um, a total of our 18 stacks. There should be some more somewhere. I'm guessing it's in one of these hopper minecarts. Maybe this one there, maybe that one. But that's where you guys would find it at. So you guys can actually just go ahead and do it again. And I'm kind of curious to see where that is at or we have one furnace that's not uh hooked up quite right down here which is always possible all right guys i did find the rest of our items they're actually sitting on the top of these and i said that i was going to go ahead and put glass on the top of this and we hadn't done that yet so I, that's the last thing that we actually need to do and you can see that we actually got our 18 stacks which is perfect i was wondering where the rest of them were at would that actually make sense i forgot to completely do put this back on the top and like I said, we can have a little bit of loss just because of not covering this top portion up. And that's all the further we actually need to go with that. And everything should be working now absolutely perfect. And hopefully you guys do enjoy this build. But if you guys did enjoy the build in any way, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. I will also put this as a world download on my website so that way you guys can go ahead and check it out for yourselves. And that way you guys have um, just something to reference for your build. But I hope you guys do enjoy. Until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys stay gaming.